Hi there everyone, Dr. Beth Westy here, and I am going to talk about a really important topic today. One that I think a lot of women um, need information on, and just to really wrap your head around what's going on, what to measure, um, what to look at when you're starting a new nutrition journey, or when you are really focused on, um, you know, I want to make changes, I want to be healthier. I want to track this. What do I what do I do? What do I track, right? And a lot of times I will say, you know, of course, first, don't weigh yourself. Um, don't even think about weighing yourself. That's just silliness. And most often women are like, oh, I can't step away from the scale. If you're a gal who is just addicted to the scale and can't figure out how to not, <laughs> not, not be on the scale, then this is going to be some really helpful information for you. Um, when we talk about ways of measurement, I often tell women first, when you're making a nutrition change, to look for energy, sleep change, those are the most important things. Secondly, if you're gonna really track something, track your measurements. You know, measure your arms, measure your chest, measure your stomach, you know, your belly button, measure your hips, measure your legs. There's gonna be changes there. So it's really important that you're measuring and tracking things that are actually gonna be the things that change for you first. Um, weight and the scale doesn't necessarily change at first. Oftentimes, because as women really get healthier, they're getting stronger and building more muscle. And as we all know and have seen before, um, or maybe you don't know, but that muscle weighs more than fat does. So if you have five pounds of muscle and then five pounds of fat, the size of it, right, is very different. So. I'll just do a little quick. This is not to scale, right? This it won't be to scale, but this would be like five pounds of muscle here, and this would be like five pounds of fat tissue in terms of size. So both of them are five pounds, but the size and the mass that that takes up is a lot bigger. So when you are building more muscle, yes, you're going to shrink and be, have it be smaller, but the scale may not change. So keep that in mind as you're going through making changes. Don't look, don't just look at the scale. I know it's the one thing that people want to see change, but take your measurements or just have that, you know, a shirt or a pair of pants that you're like, whoo, this is getting loose on me. That's a huge win, a huge, huge win. Um, because it, women build muscle differently than men do and it can be really tough for women to build the amount of muscle that they need. So a few things to also look at and these things have been kind of crammed on our throats a little bit in terms of what we should be really paying attention to in terms of our health and our weight and all these things, right? BMI is an old, an old way to measure how healthy you are, right? Now, this is a simple chart calculation. It takes your weight over your height squared. Now, this is in um, centimeters too. Let me just add that on there. This is all metric. This, me this, this calculation is metric. So your weight in kilograms over your height squared in centimeters. That doesn't really look like centimeters. Centimeters, there. And that's your body mass index. Now again, this does not take into account your muscle mass necessarily. It doesn't take into account how much of your body weight is muscle tissue and fat tissue. That's a really big deal. Um, there have been times in my life where I was training really, really hard. Um, and I was really, really muscular, like beefcake muscular. And I was at a higher end of the BMI scale for where my height was, uh, which was considered, mm, you know, this is a little risky, right? Oh, oh, no. I mean, I'm a tall gal. I'm 6'2", but it was like, ooh, you're kind of on the high end of the BMI scale. And I was like, uh, have you seen my quads? <laughs> They're huge. <laughs> um, I can squat quite a bit here. So, yes, that's why. But there was also times where I stopped lifting, I was doing more sprinting, more running, and I really leaned out, and yeah, I lost a lot of weight, but um, it's not, it's not, I mean, I would call myself more skinny fat at that point. You know, I wasn't lifting weight, I wasn't really building up that lean muscle tissue. So then I, my weight dropped um, with my height staying the same, but again, your BMI changes, um, and, but not necessarily a good measurement of how healthy or strong I was. So these are things that to really take into account. Another interesting note, again, because I'm so tall and where I'm at in my BMI range, every time I was pregnant, um, I gained about 60 pounds with my pregnancies, which is a lot. Um, I held on a lot of water weight. I was still within the normal range of my BMI when I gained 60 pounds. So this was something where I was like, 
That was actually my first indicator. I mean, my son's 11 and a half now. So I was like, uh, this doesn't seem right that I should be following something and worried about this. If I can gain like 60 pounds, then uh, what? So there's that. The one thing that I tell women to kind of track, if you are going to, if you're working with a trainer, if you're working with somebody that's going to be tracking something, I say track your body fat percentage because that's going to tell you how much lean muscle you're building and then how much body fat you're actually starting to burn, which gives you a key of how well your metabolism's working. So your body fat percentage is just your total fat mass over your total body mass, right? Pretty simple. But that's a measurement that gets taken. Usually um, it's done through like a skin fold test, right? They take those calipers and they pinch different areas of you Ooh, right um, but those are some in and then there's also you can get dunked in a tank those are just some different ways but having somebody else test you know check that for you your body fat percentage is a better indicator in my opinion on really working towards your goals because the scale may not change but if you drop body fat percentage by three percent in you know say six weeks or something that's a huge win huge win Oh my gosh, there's so much benefit to that. Getting stronger, really turning your metabolism on. These are, these are gains that are really changing your body physiology. So that is way better than seeing the scale drop by three pounds. Then it's, it's, I get way more excited about seeing this number change for women. So, so kind of keep that in mind. Again, this is really different. This is sort of an old, really old mindset on mm, what's important or what to really watch. That body fat percentage is a number that you can really track that really gets you more in tune with how your body is physically changing because again that scale may not be the same and especially for women that scale is not going to change at first if you're really working towards getting healthier and stronger versus just trying some fad diet to try and make the scale change right so all right so let me know if you guys have questions on this some of this may be newer information um, or maybe you're, this is not something that you are familiar with at all, but it's it's really important because I've gotten this question quite a bit recently from women. They're talking about, you know, oh, I was told I, my BMI was this or that. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, are you, do you lift a lot or, you know, are you really muscular? Because that really has a big part in it, you know, versus just tracking your body fat percentage as you're going through these changes to let you know how much muscle you're building and how much fat you're starting to burn. So... Yeah, let me know if you guys have questions on this, because this can be kind of a tricky topic to dive into. Mm. Yes, but that's what I've got for you guys today. Um, I have a link attached if you want to check out more information that I've got out there on the interwebs. And then my book is also available on Amazon, uh, The Female Fat Solution, which I dive into nutrition for the cycle. So, just some great info for you guys. And uh, yeah, let me know if you have questions. Have a great night.